Because people used to come through shooting us every day. Yeah, this block, uh, words can't even explain. Uh, can't even explain. Hey man, what's going on? Valley on fire, boy, on money. Young money, man, in the building. 600 boy, LA, man, LA Capone, man, get to him, man. Those hey. two boys, man. Team Rock Capone, number nine, man, number nine, the shooter, man, hear me? You have to be willing to die or go to jail for a hundred years if that's the lane that you're stepping in. You have to understand that whether you're 15, 16, you got to think like a man. You know what I'm saying? Like, so don't be in it. Oh, you're not? Uh, Why does everybody say you're only 16 years old? They say what they want to say. How old, so are, how old are you? 300. The story of King Lil J. King Lil J, or Jeff the Meth as he used to be called, originally comes from between OBN and Welch World's territory. He was heavily affiliated with Jig Dogs. Lil J actually grew up as a black disciple but would later on switch to gangster disciple. Back in 2008, Lil J used to be a DJ at parties and used to dance with his cousins. After Lil J's first move, he started claiming Fifth Ward after moving there. Since Fifth Ward and THF 46 were allies, Lil J began hanging out with some THF 46 members, including top members like Quinn and Black. Lil J also used to hang out with Fazo from NLMB, which many from STL slash EBT also did because they all went to school together. It was actually through Fazo that Lil J met Tuka and Michi from STL slash EBT. Lil J later moved to STL territory but did not claim STL just yet. He moved to STL territory around the time 600 was formed by Lil Boo and D Thang. At the time, before Lil J became STL, he actually wanted to join the 600. However, Lil J was already known for hanging out with Jaro City guys. Jaro City who had just agreed with 600 to have a ceasefire after a long war. However, that did not mean that they were cordial with each other, it only meant that they would not shoot at each other. However, they were still fighting with each other, they were also dissing each other and were still enemies. When Lil J tried to become a member of 600, most people from 600 saw him as a lame because they thought he was trying to play both sides. It all ended with one of the founders of 600, D Thang, robbing Lil J and telling him never to come back to King Drive again. It was after this incident that Lil J would instead become Jaro City. Lil J later met more STL members through Jaro City. At the time, in fact, both KI and FBG Butta was Jaro City as well. Jaro City's top members at the time were Tukas and Lil Mark's older brother Seaball and 50 Shot. In December 2011, Lil J allegedly killed Levon from RMB along with Lil B from STL slash EBT. Who actually shot is unknown, however, much points to Lil B. One of them tried to rob Levon, Levon then tried to escape by running to his car. Then either Lil J or Lil B, or both, ran up to the car and shot him several times. Levon was found dead at the scene by police. Lil J was also present when OD was shot to death in the summer of 2011 by the twins, KI and FBG Butta. 
There were many members out that day because it was Tuka Day. Lil J started to become famous in 2012 when he and FBG Duck released the song Critical where he dissed Chief Keef. In the song he said, how the fuck you a chief? You ain't putting in work. However, at the time, Lil J did not either have a reputation as a ruthless shooter yet, but Lil J had actually been in a couple of shootouts with 600, O'Block and TYMB. At the beginning of 2012, Lil J became a member of STL slash EBT, much because of Tuka, KI and FBG but who he was close to. Around this time, Lil J and STL came close to Brick Squad and Lil Jojo. As the insane movement expanded around Chicago, Lil J and other members such as Billionaire Black became insane black disciples. For example, even Lil Scrap from Mob switched to insane. Lil J, however, would later change again. After Lil Jojo was shot to death by people from a block, Lamron, SMG and 600, both Lil J and Billionaire Black became full insane GDs. Around the year 2013, Lil J became very close friends with people from Brick Squad and CMB. Many even thought he was part of Brick Squad. It is unknown if he was ever actually a member of Brick Squad, but it was very clear that he wanted to be. This was during the time when Jaro City had conflicts with STL slash EBT. This was also when 051 Young Money and STL started to diss each other, which would later lead to shootings between the gangs. This was also one of the reasons why Lil J wanted to become a member of Brick Squad. Back when this happened, King Lil J used to write on Twitter, that 051 Young Money was snakes and lames. However, all this died out over time, much due to FBG Duck, 051 Melian Motor, Jaro City, who prevented many of the conflicts as the three were very good friends. But in the year 2014 when STL, Jaro and 051 started to get cool with each other, Lil J had already distanced himself and already started his own movement, We The Ops. He was no longer part of FBG. When STL and Brick Squad later started beefing, Lil J even said that he no longer supported the BDK movement, and that he was cool with real BDs, and that he only wanted to make some money. Around this time, there were also many internal conflicts with, among others, FBG Duck and King Yella, that made King Lil J want to distance himself and start the WTO movement. Lil J and FBG Buda stole money from FBG Duck in a chain from King Yella. It all ended with Duck robbing Buda, and getting Yella's chain back. Duck then got people like STL Lucky and others to jump Lil J, even though they wanted to kill him. It was also around this time that Ide put money on Lil J's head, because Lil J once slapped Emily from PNP. Of course, 
That was not the only reason he got money put on his head. Lil J had ended up in several shootouts with 600, and actually shot 600 Breezy and Boo Wop. Lil J did not make the situation better by constantly diss 600 and a block in his songs. When both Lil J and FBG Butta had distanced themselves from STL, they started hanging out with a guy named Troop from a blood set out of town, where they were all part of Lil J's WTO movement. When Lil J and Butta were locked up for the shootout with J Da Kid, in which Troop was shot to death, FBG Butta allegedly snitched on King Lil J because he wanted a change in his life. STL decided to remain neutral in the situation because nothing was completely certain. Nothing had been said and the trial had not started yet, which meant that there was no evidence at all. Everything was just speculation after pictures of FBG but a leak from an interrogation room. If King Lil J manages to beat the case, it will never come to the surface if FBG but a actually told on Lil J. For those who do not know, King Lil J was sentenced to 14 years in state penitentiary for conspiracy to commit murder, intent to kill and injure. Lil J also was charged with murder for the shooting death of 25-year-old Film on Rezine aka Troop, who I told you about earlier in this text. Lil J beat the murder charge pretty quick but was still sentenced for attempted murder. This situation has confused many and therefore I intend to clarify it. Lil J and a few others was going to buy some weed from a guy named J the Kid from Mitch Block. Once in place, a heated discussion arose about something. Lil J, Butta, Trub and the others left the scene but later returned with weapons that Trub's girlfriend provided them with. They went to the same place and shot J the Kid. J the Kid, however, managed to pull out his weapon and shot Trub, who later died at the hospital. They were all quickly arrested. Jada Kid was considered acting in self-defense and was released while Lil J got charged with both shooting Jada Kid and a murder charge for the shooting death of his friend Troop. According to Lil J, he have beat both cases and will be home late 2020. While in prison, Lil J has ended up in fights with, among others, D Rose, Rondo No. 9, King Von, Trey 5 and Bezu. He himself has said in an interview that he has had to fight about 20 times in prison. As many you already know, Lil J has managed to escape death a number of times. Lil J has actually been hit by 21 bullets in his life and is still alive. Among others, he has been shot by D Rose. 600, Inky D, 600, Trey Savage, MTV slash GBE, Cortez, DYMB, Arrow, 051 Young Money, and Doo-Wop, NLMB. In a recent video, Lil J stated that he plans on moving to Miami with his current girlfriend and that he has a lot of songs that he has written in prison that he intends to release when he comes out. Lil J also escaped another situation where he could have been shot. 
Lil J once ran into G Baby and Rome from THF 46 in his store. Both were armed and tried to follow him out and kill him. Somehow Lil J managed to escape. Yo, what's up, man? What's up, dog? Hey, y'all niggas wanna get on Instagram, whoop me out some goofies, man. Where the fat boy at, fucking clown? Man, hello, oh, Eric. Hey, you, you always call him all, you fat, man. Man. What the fuck? Is, what's up? What y'all? Well, y'all ain't y'all not even in town, man. Huh? Y'all, where y'all at? Out of town somewhere at the hotel? Yeah, we're in Cape. Y'all some fucking goofy, G. He wanna put on Instagram, call him my phone. You got my number, call him my phone. You got my number saved, too? You want my phone? Yeah, call him on the phone. Yeah, man, I'm gonna call him right now. Hey, man, what's up, man? 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 Hey, man, I know your ass a flat ass goofy or Tuka, period. Oh, oh, goofy. You was a goofy goofy. You know he's a real goofy. Hey, hey, you broke his hell, shorty. Put the fat boy on the phone, man. That's talking all the shit on Instagram. But what are you just talking about? You trying to call me on Instagram for? Get y'all goofy, shorty. Put the fat boy on the phone, man. That's talking all the shit on Instagram. But what are you just talking about? You trying to call me on Instagram for? Get y'all goofy ass on. Get some money, broke ass niggas. You got on that wool ass pelly off. Get your goofy ass on. Ugly ass. Bonus chapter. Many people wonder what actually happened when Lil J and Lil Bibby, NLMB, ran into each other, where Lil J claims that Lil Bibby ran away from him. NLMB and STL have had their ups and downs, much because NLMB is heavily cliqued up with STL's ops. People like Duwap and Capo were also GBE, which Lil J hated. NLMB has also had a beef with Jaro City where two bodies were dropped, Archie, Jaro City, and G-Red, NLMB. However, it stayed there. Well, what actually happened when Lil J saw Lil Bibby was that Lil Bibby came out of a studio where, among others, Boss Top, O'Block, and 300 were. Once outside, he saw Lil J and started walking in another direction. He did not know why Lil J was there, and did not want to say anything to Boss Top and the others, as he wanted to stay neutral in their conflict. He also did not want to let Lil J find out that 300 were up there, so he basically walked away even though Lil J shouted at him. Bibby basically spared Lil J from getting shot or in worst case killed. Lil J later dissed Bibby in a song, claiming that Bibby ran from him. I hope Lil J moves out of Chicago when he comes out, releases a lot of music and makes big money. Lil J should know now that he has cheated death several times and that his life is worth a lot. Thank you for watching the video. Comment on what you thought of it and do not forget to like. Rest in peace to all who have been killed in gang violence.